Tea Biz Podcast delivers tea news that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Tea nourishes and inspires. It is an ancient plant-based medicine that simultaneously heals and energizes the body as it soothes the mind. Making fine tea is a blend of artistry and craftsmanship. The $200 billion tea trade is fundamentally local, yet exerts global influence, employing millions to enhance the well-being of all. Hello, everyone. Here are this week's headlines. A merry season for gifting tea awaits. An Indian tea ban will derail the recent surge in Nepal exports. An ox delivers tea transport as a service. Plus, the Republic of Tea. The Republic of Tea, headquartered in Larkspur, California, is a pioneering specialty tea retailer founded on the idea that a tea brand could inspire a lifestyle of intentional living, embodying tranquility, creativity, and personal well-being. The citizens of the Republic share a sense of mindfulness and practice self-care rituals, brewing a range of more than 350 teas and herbal infusions. Conceived by Banana Republic founders Mel and Patricia Ziegler in 1992 and nurtured by CEO Bill Rosenzweig, the company sources exceptional teas from multiple origins marketed with a holistic narrative that tea is a gateway to healthier, more intentional living. Minister of Enlightenment and Commerce Christina Tucker joins us today to discuss how the Republic of Tea cleverly transformed an unconscious beverage habit into a mindful lifestyle choice. More in a minute, but first, this important message. What makes a perfect cup of Ceylon tea? The perfect cup is from the tea businesses that ensure the protection of all the children living within their tea estates. We salute Kailani Valley, Telawakili, Bogawanthalawa, Harana, and Eliptia Tea Estates. Support Save the Children, Sri Lanka. Tea is a highly desired gift in a category experiencing significant growth. This year, sales of food purchased for gifting are estimated at $42 billion. The category includes teas and tisans, gourmet coffee, and hot chocolate. The consumer and corporate food gifting market grew from $33.5 billion globally in 2023, according to Fredonia Group, which projects an average annual growth rate of 5.2%, through 2028. North Americans spent an estimated $12.25 billion on food gifts in 2023. According to market research, sales in the U.S. and Canada are anticipated to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 6.4% from 2024 to 2034. Package Facts November-December 2023 National Online Consumer Survey found that 59% of U.S. consumers have purchased food gifts for others in the last 12 months, while 65% have bought food gifts for themselves. According to the National Retail Federation, households in the U.S. are projected to spend an average of $641 per person on gifts and $261 on food decorations and other seasonal items this year, an increase of $25 compared to the previous year. In the UK, families plan to spend £1,250 per person, that's about $1,600 U.S. dollars, a 20% decrease from the £2,115 average per person spent in 2023. Recipients consider gourmet foods, including specialty teas, a special indulgence, conveniently shopped online, attractively packaged, and inexpensive to ship, Tea is universally enjoyed as the ideal gift for recipients who, quote, don't need anything, and quote, writes Package Facts. Tea is consumed soon after receiving it and does not contribute to clutter. The most popular corporate and consumer retail food gifts include boxed candies and chocolate, 
cheese assortments, coffee, tea, and whole chocolate, cooking condiments, and food baskets with assorted goods. The food gifting market has grown significantly in recent years and is projected to continue expanding. Business Insight High prices will negatively impact holiday sales globally, but U.S. consumer spending remains resilient, approaching a $1 trillion holiday sales milestone. The National Retail Federation forecasts U.S. holiday retail sales will reach between $980 billion and $990 billion in 2024, an increase of between 2.5% and 3.5% compared to the 2023 holiday season. Madison Taylor Marketing cites a survey indicating 84% of shoppers say inflation will affect their holiday shopping. Indian tea stakeholders are intensifying efforts to ban the import of Nepal-grown tea from December through February. The Confederation of India Small Tea Growers Association, CISTA, threatened to stage sit-ins at the Penitanki border crossing starting this month. CISTA President Abhijay Gopal Chakraborty told the Millennium Post, quote, We demand the entry of Nepalese tea be stopped after November 30th. Unscrupulous traders are mixing it with Indian tea, but no action has been taken by the tea board for over 10 years. End quote. The Tea Association of India supports the ban and has written the Union Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal asking that, quote, foreign tea should not enter the market during this period, end quote. India's experience of production showfalls in May 2024, tea production declined 30% compared to the same month in 2023, leading to a cumulative mid-year production shortfall of 60 million kilos. Prices have increased significantly since June, surging to 218 rupees per kilo, up 20% compared to 2023. Overall totals are expected to fall 100 million kilos short of last year's record 1.4 billion kilo harvest. No decision has been announced regarding the import ban. Recently, growers and smallholders asked the Tea Board of India to delay the November 30th factory closings until mid-December to help make up the shortfall. India imported 29 million kilos of tea last year, down from 31 million in 2022. Tea imports, valued at 4.28 billion rupees, that's about 51 million U.S. dollars, are mainly used in low-cost blends. In 2022, India imported 29.4 million worth of Nepal tea, $9.33 million worth of Kenyan tea, $1.63 million worth of Sri Lankan tea, and $3.43 million of mainly green teas from Vietnam, with $188 million worth of Chinese tea, according to OECD Economic Commission statistics. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, FSSAI, estimates that 16 million kilos of tea, both legal and illegal, cross the northern border into India each year. Nepal's tea export volume is up 36%, and average prices have increased by 50% to $12.8 million during the first half of the year, according to Nepal's Michi Customs Office. Nepal ships 80% of its tea to India. Quote, Generally speaking, the demand for Nepal CTC tea in India is for the lower common quality, lower priced tea, somewhere in the 90 to 100 rupee per kilo price bracket, says Nepal's Samshir tea director, Anshu Giri. Medium and good quality teas from Nepal almost never sell in India. They're sold domestically, since there are a lot of medium-quality teas in India itself, and hence there is no need. He said, quote, These teas are useful to all segments of the Indian market, are useful as price reducers for packet teas, and fall within the range that would normally be used for re-export. Ox Delivers is a UK and Rwanda based e mobility startup that has developed a purpose built electric utility truck 
ideally suited to transporting tea. The ox truck arrives folded flat in a box with batteries installed. Six of the vehicles fit into a shipping container. The trucks are plug-and-play, assembled in hours with hand tools and linked to a payment system designed so growers pay kilogram per kilometer time and destination fees. The service is flexible and accepts small loads of items, such as perishable foods, for delivery to urban shopkeepers. Multiple suppliers harvesting bananas, for example, meet at a central pickup point to fill the truck. The cost is about $1 for the typical load, no higher than hiring multiple bike deliverers. Co-founder and managing director Simon Davis calls Aux the first purpose-designed electric truck for Africa. Quote, every business is built on people and trust, especially logistics, end quote, he told Auto Futures magazine. The service works like this. Customers book delivery by app or phone, and the Aux Plus driver, who also loads and serves as a customer service representative, collects the cargo. The cargo is loaded and transported via an electric aux truck. Payment is via mobile money on delivery. Trucks return to the pool nightly to be recharged and maintained. Aux is described as Uber for global farmers and currently serves 4,000 customers. There are 3 billion people who do not own a vehicle and never will, says Davis. Quote, we are reimagining how these rural entrepreneurs get their goods to market. This is affordable, reliable, profitable, and carbon zero transportation as a service, end quote, he says. The 3.5 metric ton trucks are designed with sturdy frames and high clearance to accommodate poor road infrastructure in lousy weather. Each has a two-ton capacity and travels 100 miles between charging stations. The Ox has 95% fewer parts than a comparable diesel fuel pickup. The tailgate lowers as a ramp and the canvas sides provide easy access. The doors are made of plywood. The truck was developed with funding from the Royal Academy of Engineering. The Ox Delivers Company was recently awarded a 1.5 million UK Energy Catalyst grant to construct infrastructure for charging in Rwanda. Ox currently operates 30 vehicles, three are electric, and the remainder are diesel-powered prototypes being phased out. The company plans to expand its fleet to 100 electric vehicles by the end of 2025. Business Insight Only 15,000 trucks operate in Rwanda, a landlocked East African country of 13 million, that transports large quantities of fish and agricultural products by scooter and bike. The scarcity of trucks, for example, forces fishermen who cannot afford to refrigerate their catch to wait until a vehicle is available. And now, a word from this week's sponsor. Hello, I'm Bogdan, a passionate tea drinker and the inventor of the ultimate tea machine, the Brewmaker One. Preparation is key to making fine tea. Sequential steepings deliver the best taste possible and unlock the true value of whole leaf teas and botanicals. Brew automates that process without using any pots or capsules. This simple to operate smartphone control device stores steeping profiles to consistently make great tea at the push of a button. Brew also reduces time, waste and energy. That's because I engineered the brew to remember control settings for temperature, brewing time and quantity. Using my patented process lets you stack steep simply and conveniently. The Republic of Tea, headquartered in Larkspur, California, is a pioneering specialty tea retailer founded on the idea that a tea brand could inspire a lifestyle of intentional living, embodying tranquility, creativity, and personal well-being. Citizens of the Republic share a sense of mindfulness and practice self-care rituals, brewing a range of more than 350 teas and herbal infusions. Conceived by Banana Republic founders Mel and Patricia Ziegler in 1992 and nurtured 
by CEO Bill Roseswick, the company sources exceptional teas with multiple origins marketed with a holistic narrative that tea is a gateway to healthier, more intentional living. Minister of Enlightenment and Commerce Christina Tucker joins us today to discuss how the Republic of Tea cleverly transformed an unconscious beverage habit into a mindful lifestyle choice. As Vice President of Sales and Communications for the Republic of Tea, Christina Tucker believes in the beauty and power of the leaf. Her mission is to educate and inspire people worldwide about teas and herbs, their varieties, origins, rituals, cultures, and health benefits. She joined the Republic of Tea in 2003 and was named Minister of Enlightenment in 2007. Before that, she was National Sales Manager at Just Desserts and worked as the Promotions Manager at Whole Foods Markets Allegro Coffee Company in Boulder, Colorado. She is the current chair of the Board of Trustees of the American Herbal Products Association. Tucker holds a degree in economics from Alfred Lerner College of Business and Economics at the University of Delaware and a master's in strategic communication from the American University School of Communication. I'm so delighted, Christina, that you joined us today. Oh, my pleasure. Well, it's an, it's an honor to be here with you. This is going to be a great conversation. Today's discussion explains how sip-by-sip rather than gulp-by-gulp advocacy resonated with consumers who came to expect much more from a tea brand than attractive tins and eco-friendly messaging. The Republic of Tea first articulated its commitment to ethical sourcing, fair labor practices, reducing waste, rejuvenating land, and sustainable cultivation over 30 years ago. How did that advocacy evolve? We're so fortunate at the Republic of Tea that the concept of the brand is all in a book called The Republic of Tea that Mel and Patricia Ziegler and Bill Rosenswag wrote in the early 90s. All of the ideas um, are captured in this book. So we can always refer back to the book to get inspiration and to go back to that place of where the heart of it began and then has infused in all of us. Author Simon Sinek discusses the importance of companies establishing why they exist. During a lengthy correspondence, the Republic of Tea's founders embraced that concept and later published the process in a 355-page book that details what we wanted it to be and the values they aspired to, along with the steps necessary to realize their vision. Will you talk a little about convincing millions of consumers to emigrate to the Republic? Of course, it all starts with great taste. You know, all these different varieties, all this innovation that we do is all about delivering on that promise that it's going to taste amazing. And then uh, we work from there. Uh, And then part of that taste experience is that philosophy and that lifestyle that we emphasize. It comes from there and then it expands. We create the republic of tea that people can emigrate to. When you're sipping the republic of tea, you become a citizen. And this whimsy, this idea that you've immigrated to a special place that the tea takes you to and that helps you have this lifestyle of well-being is really quite magical um, and fun and whimsical. And yes, at times it might be a little bit of a stretch for some, but when you embrace it, it becomes just part of, of your whole experience. And that's what our promise is, is to deliver that just great taste experience as part of being a citizen. In the last few years, we've seen the word botanicals or the word infusions attached to several former tea companies. As you developed your concept, it did not signal we are Camellia sinensis and nothing else. Instead, you promoted a range of infusions, herbal blends, and teas. The Republic of Tea, for example, was always big on green tea. Talk about why infusions, including traditional teas, are now a thing. We think of it this way. I mean, all of these magical plants, all Camellia sinensis to chamomile to hibiscus to ginseng, you name it, all of these plants and herbs and 
shrubs and roots, they all come together and unite in, in these cups, in these wonderful blends that we make at the Republic of Tea. Um, we have over 350 varieties of teas and herbs now, botanicals, botanicals blended with Camellia sinensis, black tea, green tea on its own as well. So it's really just being innovative and creative, not being afraid. We take a lot of risks. We import from, oh gosh, I think it's over 80 countries now. So we're playing with all different ingredients all the time. And when it comes to the trends, we really listen to our citizens. They're often telling us what they're looking for. They're looking for herbal infusions, botanicals. Some are looking for functions. We started to blend with more herbs, yes, right from the beginning. But then we, in 2006, we expanded into our Be Well collection. So we started to work more with function with our beautifying botanicals, which we launched a few years back, um, and playing with blue butterfly pea flower and um, different white hibiscus and just exploring all these different types of herbs. And then we've launched our super adapt collection where we're using ashwagandha and rhodiola and some of these wonderful adaptogenic herbs. We have a collection of just our our super herbs, our single um, herbs of origin that are all organic, premium, best in class, different herbals like an Egyptian hibiscus or a South African green rooibos, always looking again for just the, the best flavor in the cup. Tea audiences monitor every detail on series like Downton Abbey and Bridgerton. And tea enthusiasts like to chat about what Lady Mary or Violet Crawley are drinking or the beautiful silver service polished in the kitchen. It was a delight reading Carson's Guide to Tea at Downton Abbey. The Republic of Tea brought fantasy to life with a Downton Abbey line that includes eight teas, gift sets, a recipe journal, seven Bridgerton teas, and the official Bridgerton Guide to Entertaining. Well, let me go back even farther than that. It started with Memoirs of a Geisha. That was the first collaboration that we did. We know people like to enjoy tea when they're reading or enjoying a series like Downton Abbey or Bridgerton. So that's where the connection began. And it, so we had success with Memoirs of a Geisha, but where these partnerships really blossomed would be with the movie Eat, Pray, Love. We took black tea from India, cinnamon from Indonesia, and blood orange from Italy. So those three countries. So that was where some of these ideas really integrating with the story and the blends started to come together. The blends are collaborative. So we're working with the the, the respective Netflix or Disney or BBC or and we all taste teas together. We talk about the characters. We talk about what would they drink or what, what symbolizes that character. Um, and it bl blossoms from there. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're so much fun to work on. And it really also connects with the citizens. We still sell Downton Abbey teas. I don't think we'll ever be able to let those go. You have seasonal favorites as well. Yes, we are in tea drinking season and the fall flavors are, are just a thrill. So we have our iconic hot apple cider. It is our top seller year in, year out for our fall tea. But we do have something new that we added. Um, of course, there's always pumpkin. So we have our pumpkin pie chai that we launched this year. Really interesting ingredients I have to share. Of course, with a chai, we've got cinnamon, ginger, of course, pumpkin, nutmeg, but there's also roasted dandelion root in here, which makes this blend so well-rounded. Your continuity is impressive. Messaging must change over 20 years, becoming more perceptive, insightful, and effective, but core values are timeless. Lifestyle brands wax and wane with many companies spending to raise awareness for a good cause, but often when the person championing that cause is replaced, it becomes clear that the company isn't committed to the bone. If it does not embrace fearless innovation and a commitment to values in its DNA, it drifts back to social, environmental, and business practices that are no longer sustainable. It'll be the death of companies going forward. 
I agree. And that is something distinct about the Republic of Tea in that it is bones were built with those values and continues to be um, at our at our core, our ethos are built around that. To your question about the future and looking forward, it's absolutely necessary that as an industry, we all come together and look towards resolving all of the the issues that different countries are battling at origin. Us as tea companies come together and look at the future and how we can help the livelihood of all of us in the in the whole tea trade. That that holistic, that intrinsic need to do good for each other. And that is what's going to make our our beautiful industry thrive. Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of T-Biz journalists and tea experts? Remember to visit the T-Biz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week. Produced by Audavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.